Hello, so Rio has been out for a while and I have been watching a lot of runs as well as talking to a lot of data miners and limit testers and come to a general consensus in my mind about what are the better egos to be using for this railway. So um, let's get to it. Let's start with the extremely good stuff. Uh, these guys need no mention. I think so at least. Uh, Ledger Domain, Ebony Stem, Telepuldon, Representation Emitter, and Bodysec. Ledger Domain, um, if you have not watched my previous tier list, I already praise it for being a, 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 a cheater uh, ego, where this guy costs 4. Like, all AoE egos cost 6 usually, at, at Zayn level. But then this guy is just like, eh, I'm gonna cost 4 and be AoE anyway. And this guy really does help you clear a lot of the stages here. We got a lot of uh, N Corp guys, K Corp guys, uh, Cockroach guys that are weak to blunt, so he can get a shit ton of value. Especially since this is AoE and targets 3 slots, it's just them solid and cheap. And basically, G Gregor, 7 Otis, Base Gregor, and many others can just help farm this ego because it's gl Gluttony 3 mainly, and then 1 Sloth. So it's pretty easy to get the Sloth, and then the Gluttony is the tricky part, which is. Pretty much settled as long as you bring a G Gregor. So yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's a very bullshit uh, ego. It's very cheap and does the job. Even the stem is an interesting one. I actually didn't think that she would be this good, but she was really good in the uh, in the boss fight specifically. So the strong part about her is that she does gluttony pierce and targets five slots. That's the big one here. And then she even applies Gluttony Fragility. So if Otis goes first, you're getting a quite a lot of value out of this one. As long as you can stack some Gluttony moves on top of it. Um, so mainly this Ego has been used to clear uh, stages where the boss has multiple parts. Uh, for example, Hitler's Ichfist has Hand, Hand, Tail, Body, if I remember correctly. So you can target four parts and then the last one can hit something else or the last one can just be wasted. Uh, either way, the boss will take 100 something damage. Especially if you can somehow apply uh, Fragility in the form of uh, W Dawn's Leap or Rabbit Heath Cliff's skill tree. You can do something crazy like uh, apply fr uh, Fragility, Pierce Fragility onto the target with like Gaze or so, and then you just obliterate them with all this Pierce damage. Like I said, Pierce is extremely strong for uh, this uh, railway, so I think in general having this 5 target AoE Pierce is extremely strong. Downside is it's pretty damn expensive, so some people do overclock their uh, ebony stems for some of the boss fights to try and limit test those to try to get the shorter stuns possible. It costs a hell of a lot, so it does require a lot of planning. So for the regular player, I don't think you'll be concerned about overclocking too much. I think it's just uh, just bring it along. It will really help you clear those waves where you want to uh, destroy enemies really fast, especially when they have gaze on them. Oh, interesting. All right. Teleport Dawn, uh, do I really need to explain? Teleport Dawn is just so crazy with the regular Teleport, uh, with the regular Dawn. Giving her 10 charge basically and a passive that gives her multiple charge so that she can rip space. And rip space as we all know does a billion damage as long as you can apply some sort of fragility beforehand. Or the enemy is particularly weak to envy or slash, yeah, it's just an insane ego. Oh my goodness, it even costs 5, like imagine that, it's a he class ego and it costs 5 and it gives so much good shit. The base power is even good, like it's 18 plus 8, yeah it's insane. This passive is also so good because it helps to charge a lot more. This plus W Dawn plus uh, using, trying to give her 2 actions using a 4 man team can really get you a lot of value. You can do shit like Teleport Dawn and Leap on the same turn, which is uh, kind of nuts. You can get a lot of charge from that, yeah. Alright, and then next we got Representation Emitter, and she gets a special mention to me because, as you know, uh, she has NOA, so she gives she gets a plus 2 Clash power. And she also does AoE Blunt Pride, which is a pretty great uh, damage typing here. So, the Blunt part can be useful for many of the stages I mentioned for Legend Domain. The Pride part is particularly interesting because you can use this for quite a few stages where the enemies are weak to pride. So I, if I remember correctly, that is the K-Corp stages where the enemies are also weak to pride. So you can do even more damage to them. So if we go to Serum, uh, I think it was some of the uh, low level guys. 
as well as the shielded guys. Those guys are weak to pride and weak to blunt at the same time. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. It's like, uh, from what I've been told, it's like three times damage if it's times two times two. So I just aga aga go with that. Otherwise, I really don't know the actual damage calculation. I just know, oh, fatal, fatal, all right, time to explode them. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so this another good stage I think is the uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, is it fork tongue? I think it's fork tongue. Because uh, representation emitter is still uh, well, these guys take normal damage from blunt, but they are weak to pride skills. Okay, no, I was wrong. These guys are weak to ref skills. Wrong, wrong characters. Uh, well, either way, it's you know anyway it gives damage buffs, them damage buffs. Um, Pride is just a very good for some fights, and then Blunt is just overall very solid for a lot of these wave battles and his AoE. So just a very very strong ego overall. Uh, Body Sack, another crazy good one. A bit insane actually how much I use Body Sack for my players. So Body Sack gives 3 haste and 1 attack power next turn. And with Rabbit Heathcliff, you get 3 haste, basically means you're 6 speed next turn, you can quick suppression and the enemy dies because they have 1 attack power as well, and then you have plus 2 coin power, so blah 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 blah, and the enemy is dead. In addition, he still has a great passive that gives him 2 attack power, 2 haste, and 4 fragility when an enemy dies. The fragility is not so important when you are getting 2 attack power, that's a lot of attack power. And then they just give you more haste too, like, even if it was just attack power, it'd be fine, but they give you haste as well. So it's just kind of nuts that Rabbit, that Rabbit he, he can benefit from body sex so much. Yeah, insane. Yeah, such a good ego. So these five are the so-called gods of the railway so far. And then we have these five who I also really really like specifically for their typing and them being slashing. So uh, I, I think the only one that's not slashing here is uh, Rhymeshang Rodion. She's more of a blunt AoE so just really good for quite a lot of stages. Um, actually let me take a look at uh, Rodion first. I can't remember the argument I wanted to talk about when I put her there. So Rhymeshang is a Gloom, yep, it does Gloom damage, it targets 3 slots, it has this bonus damage, and it does Blunt. Okay, so it's still pretty decent. I mean, the thing about Blunt AoEs is just that it's like Legendomain, like Representation Emitter. They are, they are, as long as you bring them to a stage where they can be used, it's already pretty solid. Especially when she has this additional damage buff. So she does help you to speed up. I think the only downside is that her cost is a bit... Oh, like a bit extreme. It's five gloom, three envy. So, while I do put her at pretty highly because of the AOE blunt, this cost is kind of sus. Like, I think representation emitter is six, legend domain is three. So maybe you don't need to go this far. Hmm, now that I look at it, maybe she doesn't really need to be that high because eight cost is pretty rough for a three AOE hit. Hmm. I think it's still pretty good though. Because being AoE blunt, her 8 costs. Okay, maybe maybe they are better. Maybe they are just better options, sadly. Right, but I, I okay, so I've talked to people and they say Rhymeshank is really good, but when I look at the cost afterwards, it's like I'd rather not pay that when I could pay something cheaper, you know? And 5 Gloom, 3 Envy. Uh the Envy is for the body sacking, the Gloom could be used for other egos. I don't know. Maybe if you need some gloom expenditure you could use her. Maybe I'll just put a situation really good. Maybe if you ha happen to have a lot of uh, gloom energy left over from all the leaps you're gonna do with W Don, then you could bring her along to pop it. Uh, it is on Rodion, so Rodion blunt, yeah, uh, and Rodion will do a lot of blunt, and then uh, you can have Rhyme Shank as well to consume some of your gloom to do even more blunt. Yep, actually not too bad. All right, then uh, talking about what is cast. What is cast is like one of my favorite egos when I was doing the base ID run because it has the proper typing of Pride and Slash. So KCOG weak to Pride and the thick ones are weak to Slash so you can do a butt ton of damage with this one and if the target's HP is above the 50% you do even more damage so it's just overall a crazy good nuker. I believe whenever I threw it and the enemy had 2 fragility it was about 117 damage so yeah definitely a must bring especially if you bring N, uh, N Corp Rodion. Uh, this will help to compensate for the fact that she has a few pure skills in that in her uh, arsenal. Yeah, so pretty pretty damn solid. The cost is also not even that bad. It's three pride and one gloom. Although you can argue that maybe you want to use representation emitter instead of this. Um, it's just that uh, you know it's slashing instead of blunt, so it will do way more damage to the 
uh, the slash weak enemies in Keiko. Then suddenly, all these four fresh flames. I actually didn't didn't consider them when I was doing like the the testing or research. Uh, but then someone told me that fourth fourth match flame uh Yi Sang carried them in their uh K-Cock clear and I was like what the hell are you talking about? And apparently he's right because uh AoE tree slot with slash and wrath, so it hits all the right type things for that stage. So I was actually pretty surprised. Yeah, so if we go to Serum and then I just click on those uh, big boys. The uh empowered stuff, right? They always have two fragility also, so uh, it really does a lot of damage. Red slash, yeah, that guy is going to take so much damage, and it hits two of them, so it's pretty worth when you look at the cost as well. It's seven, and you probably have a lot of excess ref. When I was doing my base ID run, I actually had quite a bit of excess ref skills. I don't think we have much egos that consume a lot of ref, except the fourth match flamers. So actually, bringing them along is a pretty smart strat to consume all your ref. So I was uh, pretty surprised when someone told me that 4th match flame Yisang was pretty good. And then you can look at the other 4th match flamers, they also have the same power. Uh, except uh, they are more single target. Uh, Rodion can be AoE if you overclock, but it might not be worth it to overclock. I think it might be costing too much. Uh, yeah, so 2 pride 4 Wrath here, another Wrath consumer. And then you look at that power, it's amazing. Followed with uh, all this stuff like on kill gain 2 attack power, like wow, this is this is kind of nuts, you know. You bring like 7 section 6 Ryoshu for that k Kok fight and she will do all her bit, her slash damage with times 2 and then when you want, you just pop an ego to get a kill and you get attack power up for next turn. It's just, wow, yeah. Just for raw damage too, it's just amazing because 21 plus 16 is an amazing stat line, yeah. Just, just insane, yeah. Then lastly, we look at Rodion's. Rodion's is 4th match flame. It's uh, I, I think it's one of the weaker ones because of the negative coin. But, 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 when I looked at it again, right, it had Wrath Fragility. And I was like, oh, what? I didn't know it had Wrath Fragility. And it also, if you overclock, right, you get AoE and you get Wrath Fragility on 3 targets. So when I look at this, I was like, wait a minute, there's some potential here. Yeah, the 4th match flamers. Don't sleep on them. I think for K-Corp, they're actually pretty damn decent to help you speed through this. Yep, yep. Oh man, so cool that we can find all these different strategies. All these egos all like used to be a bit confusing in their existence, and then after that we found we find purposes for them, so it's really cool uh, that we can do these kind of things. I like the team building variety in this game. Uh, okay, um, moving on from the K-Corp shredders. We got the make life easier. Generally, for people who are just trying to get their clears comfortably, get their rewards and peace out, these four will be your best friends because they make a lot of these crazy hard fights mechanically. Uh, just a lot, a lot easier. So Yi Sang's AoE speed has carried my base ID clear like no, 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 non-stop. Uh, he gives uh, AoE haste, so that means everyone goes fast, we get to choose who we want to clash. He gives two attack down and he usually goes first because Yi Sangs are usually very fast. So overall, just a very solid AoE. Sorry, not AoE, a very solid debuff onto boss fights. It will help to make all your clashes winnable and it will help to uh, speed up your entire team so you can choose whatever you want to clash. So one of my favorite spams. Chain of Others is a bit trickier to spam. Uh, Chain of Others, I believe the cost is a bit trickier for the base ID team to get. Chain of Others costs Envy, Gloom and Sloth, which is tricky because I had to use a lot of body sacks, so my Envy supply was low. Uh, Gloom is also pretty tricky for base ID teams, but I think if you have W Dawn, this should be no problem for you. So as expected, uh, Chain of Others, every time you fight a boss, whether it be the dog, whether it be Hellas Ichpis, and you bring this guy along, he'll make that fight super easy. The clashes just become super easy to win. Yep. I think the only downside is that for Headless, he resists Blunt. But the good thing is that for the dog, the dog is weak to both pride and blunt on the body. So you can actually abuse Chain of Others on that guy for damage and debuffs. So it's pretty damn solid. I really like Chain of Others for controlling some enemies. I think I did do that for the dog because Chain of Others was a pretty decent damage loss. Pursuance and Fluid Sack are just healing sources. Fluid Sack is actually used for clearing some stages uh, faster because of the AoE blunt nature of it. I believe it also has a 5 target. Uh, gotta have to check. Gonna have to check that. Fluid Sack has. Yeah, 5 target. And it does blunt on all of them and it heals and blah blah blah. There's a lot of stuff. 
So yeah, it's just pretty damn solid too. Uh, the, the, the base power and the coin power is also pretty decent for an AoE, especially a 5 target AoE, so you can use it for maybe boss killing as well, but uh, unfortunately most of our bosses with multiple parts are usually resistant to blunt. Yeah, uh, The dog is weak to blunt on the telepole and on the body, but you can only hit those parts twice, and then Headless Ichpis is resistant to all blunt, so it's a bit trickier to get value compared to Ebony Stem. So yeah, I think she's going to make life easier and she was also used a lot in um, the blunt phases of what, like when you fight K-Corps, sorry not K-Corps, um, when you fight N corps and when you fight Cockroaches, if you can somehow get your fluid sack, Cockroaches might be a bit of a stretch because it's very hard to get the energy unless you bring a team for it. But yeah, the target fire slots does help to clear out those ways really fast. Okay, so heals, debuffs. And heal, uh, yeah, heal, then debuffs and buffs. All these guys really do make life easier for the casuals. And after that, we got these situationally good ones. And these are only good, right, if you are specifically going for setups. So, what does Hexnail and Yasunyata have is that they buff specific stuff. Uh, so, if you look at Hexnail, it buffs Pierce and Envy Fragility. So, who has Pierce Fragility and Envy Fragility benefit? Uh, it benefits Rabbit Heathcliff, the Pierce affects all the Piercers, so W Dawn, uh, TT Honglu, Gregor. The Envy part specifically is usually uh, for W Dawn and uh, Heathcliff because those two have rip space and quick suppression. And you can even overload it, uh, overclock it to make it more Envy focused, but uh, it actually doesn't matter too much. But yeah, so some people do use this Ego to set up even more damage on targets. The bad news is that force are really slow. Yes, so force are usually pretty slow unless you bring Kraust, who has a speed of... Who has a speed of... has a speed of 4 to 7. You can also bring L Corp Faust, I think. L Corp Faust does give herself a lot of haste. 3 to 6 is, doesn't matter, she gives herself a lot of haste. So also a good option, but if you do have the one who grips, you should obviously bring her because of gaze giving a damage buff. So yeah, uh, usually um, the the files you bring are fast. If you bring the other two though, it's uh, not gonna work out. So if you do want to set up for this hex nail, you do want to bring one of these faster files. And it's all about making sure that Faust goes first. If somehow your rabbit goes earlier than you, then it doesn't work. The setup doesn't work. So people do reroll just to make sure that uh, Faust goes before rabbit somehow. And then after that, they hex nail into quick suppression into a bunch of other damage. That's how they set it up usually. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky one, that's for sure. But I have seen some people try it. Some people also say that it's probably not worth it and it might be a bit overkill and could be argued. Uh, it's because this uh, this ego costs NV6 and you do need that for your body sex. So yeah, it's a tricky one. Then Yasunyata shares the same setup, except it's for a different type of setup. Yasunyata, when you activate, it applies Lust Fragility. And if you overclock it, it applies 4 Fragility and 2 Lust Fragility. So this is the main one that people have been theorizing. So it's not for the base damage, it's not for the attack power, although that is still helpful. It's actually for this huge amount of fragility that can be used for mostly everyone. And then there's less fragility, which only some people can use. So um, things like the gripping, uh, eviscerate, shank are pretty good options for this. Uh, less fragility, yeah. So Yasunyata is on the uh, opposite end. It's more for the... Uh, it's more for general use and for the last. while uh, Hexnail is specifically for Pierce and specifically for Envy. Yep. So both have their own setups. Uh, Otis doesn't really have the problem of uh, being fast because uh, Otis has some ridiculous speed on the 7 section director so she is going to more or less always be faster. So it's a bit easier to get the Yasunyata setup from what I understand. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about this, and then what about Honglu and Rhyme Sheng? Uh, I talked about Rhyme Sheng being very good AoE. Uh, I Honglu is exactly the same. Honglu uh, Land of Illusion also requires a lot of gloom. So if you have a lot of gloom and you want to do AoE blunt, then you could also use Honglu's. Yeah, 
Uh, the thing is, Brian Shank does have that line that says it does more damage when target is above 50%, so it's technically still more damage than this one. And it also doesn't cost uh, 6, it costs 8. So you're paying 2 more for even more damage, so it's just a choice, really. Land of Illusion is alright as a blood AoE. It's just uh, you do need a lot of Gloom Source, and for base ID runs, I never experienced uh, having a lot of Gloom. So if you are running quite a few Gloom Sources, then feel free to run these Egos as well, so that you can consume those resources. Okay, now we go to generically good ones that I use for my other runs. So, two Pathos and Ryoshu. These two are just solid. Good passives and good clashing ability. So, Otis, the two Pathos Mathos, everyone knows the Odyssey has a purpose. The passive is, a great, is great, it gives one damage up, so that's 10% more damage as long as you don't get hit. It costs really cheap, and base Otis just fully supplies this. And then uh, base power of 20 is amazing, plus 3 is alright. And if target HP is below 50%, you do even more damage, which is amazing. Yeah. It's also PS2, so you know, it benefits off gaze and whatnot. So it's just a pretty solid overall uh, ego. Because of that, um, I use this mostly for clashing and not really for damage, but it actually does do quite a chunk of damage. Sometimes it will do 70, 80, depending on the target. But yeah, it's uh, pretty overall solid. I just think that maybe if you were going to use two pathos, you might use someone else. Like, you could save the energies for representation emitter, for example. You could also save the sloth energy for ledger domains, for example. A bit of uh, other considerations, really. It's like, this is good, but they are better, technically. So you could use those instead. Uh, same for Ryoshu. Um, Ryoshu's uh, base ego is actually pretty solid. Uh, the reasoning is that uh, she also gets slash damage. The problem is by ref absolute, uh, ref resonance divided by two, yeah, which is a lot harder to get. And it also consumes your ref that you usually have an access of, and unfortunately consumes the lust, which I was having a lot of trouble getting. But I think if you do, if you are running like the zero 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 teams, you should have quite a bit of lust stocked up. Yeah, good base power, inflicts fragility next turn, slash and uh, lust. It's uh, not too bad. Wins the clashes that you wanted to. Okay, now what do all these egos at the bottom suffer is that um, the, I cannot justify the cost for damage most of the time. It's like, if you wanted to use these guys, you would be consuming resource for something that's less than something else you could use up here. For example, if you... Uh, let's look at uh, Snag Harpoon for example. Right, So Snag Harpoon is a blunt ego that gives her more clash power. Instead of doing that, why don't I just uh, why don't I just use a regular attack from R Ishmael? Like, why do I want Bind? Why do I want Tremor? Why do I want this uh, target the real most? You could argue it's for clashing and doing a little bit of damage, but most enemies are pretty weak to uh, like this Gloom and base power is not. Ex I mean, this Gloom and Blunt is not particularly great for quite a few enemies, and I'd rather use AOE blunts especially for this railway because of the sheer amount of waves of blunt weak enemies we have. So a single target blunt kind of kind of uh I, I feel like I could invest that energy into something else that will give me more damage. Because the the thing about railway is that it's all about damage, right? Uh, if you want ED stuff you could uh slap in here as well and just uh, call it a day. For example if you want to control a boss and make him one speed all the time you could argue that you can slap snack up in here. Just that um, these guys really do control the like help really do make it a lot easier for the fights that you want to win. Boss control, the buffs, buffs, you name it, you got it here. The rest of these guys are either lackluster uh, damage wise or because I couldn't find a real purpose for them. Uh, you, your energy could go back, go elsewhere basically. Uh, teleport Force is a weird one though. Uh, teleport Force, the argument for Teleport Force is because it is a he, so it shares the same slot as Fluid Sack. And Fluid Sack is a very good AoE for a lot of stages, while Teleport giving charge doesn't do anything for the end fouls that you bring. If only W Force was a little bit better and did a lot more damage, then we could justify bringing Teleport Force. But the way it stands, uh, since we'll be mostly bringing this Faust or this Faust and not this Faust, we don't bring Telepole. Even though Telepole at its core is not a bad ego at all. It costs 7, 
It gives you charge counts. Paralyze, um, well, depends on the speed, but you'll be running W Corp, which is slow. I think I talked about this before, yeah. It's just a unfortunate ego. Uh, it's a fortunate ego matched with an unfortunate ID. It could have been better, I feel. But W Dawn's teleport is just so much better than the Faust ego. She does look very pretty though. I really like these egos. Uh. Uh, Fluid Sack is just better, yeah. So Sancho, um, I mean, I talked about the base power of Sancho. I hate it so much. I also talk about the passive being pretty damn worthless right now. Art of Blossom, I, if there was a burn team, I could argue for these. Yeah. That was the burn team I could argue for this one. I, this one, these do pretty, these do slash and raid, so that's chip, that's a very good for K corps. But other blossom, right? Um, let me double check. Other blossom, it's a he. It costs seven. It does pierce and ref. That's unfortunate, and it's single target as well. Mm. The base power is really good though. Uh, but then the passive is also, uh, I mean, if, it, if it's just for damage, let me look at damage. This is being 7 for pretty decent damage, but there is the PS, so it doesn't really help with the K Corp part. Uh, hmm. I don't know, I really don't know. I feel like that's better expenditures, basically, for Ardor Blossom Flame. Fertility, um, I think it's because it takes a bit too long right now to charge up Fertility to a level where your Massault will do a lot of damage. I... Yeah, and then besides that, everyone else either costs too much or they take a while to get started or they have just not so great coins. Or their effects just don't help you to speedrun a fight. Impending Day is an interesting one. So some people swear by it and some people don't swear by it. They say that uh, Impending Day takes too long to actually give you a net positive. But I have heard otherwise as well. Sounds a tricky one. Uh, some people say like it's totally not worth it to bring Impending Day because um, uh, you slow down your clears because you're trying to minimize the rolls as much as you can. I mean, minimize the turns as much as you can. And you really don't want to be uh, using Sinclair to uh, get the uh, charge because Sinclair must be the one defeating an enemy with an attack or counter to gain it. So in that situation, you wouldn't want to be last hitting with Sinclair only. But some people do swear by it as they spend, um, they sacrifice their like uh, their wave turn, so the cockroach turn and the uh, the Ada turn to just farm resources for the rest of the run. So there are two different arguments, and I have, and I think uh, one of the speed runs for this game, I think the sixty five run, actually did not use this. So I am inclined to believe that impending day is on the weaker side. You don't want to spend turns where you could be killing the enemy farming for resources. But at the same time, Impending Day actually might go into uh, make life easier because you have such an abundance of resources that you can just throw your uh, egos out as many times as you want. So I can argue for this if you're going for that strat, yeah? Everyone else here, I couldn't really think about anything. So if you guys do think about anything, please let me know uh, your thoughts about these egos down here. Let me know thoughts about any of these egos up here. I think I mean I think I mainly got the strong ones at the top, like pretty alright. I think the ones that I'm a bit sus about are the ones that I threw in the day are better because I've not seen any strats that use these guys specifically to speedrun anything. Yeah. So I think that's it for this one. Um, generally you just pick the units that can help you charge these egos at the top and you're pretty much good to go. This one's free, this one's free, this one's free, this one's free, so the only real big one that you want is Teleport Dawn, but that's only if you run W Dawn. So yeah, you can actually just use the rest of these Egos to make your run way easier. And also, if you bought the Battle Pass, then you get all these three here. And you also have what is cast as a free one too. So there are quite a lot of free-to-play options as well up here, which is quite nice actually. I really love how uh, P-Moon is making the game really free-to-play friendly. You can still do a lot of speedrun strats and you can still do a lot of uh, easy strats for clearing the real way for the rewards and stuff. Yep. So yeah, much appreciated from for Pimun. And besides that, I don't think I have anything else. Yeah. So just leave your comments below, uh, talk to me, tell me, hey, I think this one's better, I think this one's worse, then I'll consider it for the next time I do this one. Although, I don't think they'll rerun a real way, right? Maybe... Is Arknights rerun their uh, CCs? I don't think they do, so maybe we won't even have to come and look at this again. 
But just let me know, I'll just try and post out a new one maybe. Uh, before the real ends. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for, thank you all for watching.